In this video, we're going to look at the graphs of reciprocal functions, starting with y equals cosecant x, or the way we write this, uh, y equals cscx. Now, cosecant of x, if you'll recall, is actually just 1 over the sine of x. That's why we call it a reciprocal function. So we can start with the graph of sine and do 1 over each of those values to get the graph of cosecant. I've started by drawing a graph of sine between negative pi over 2 and 2 pi. And we're going to use that to uh, go ahead and draw the graph of cosecant. We're looking at our special axis values because we know those easily. So values at pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and the multiples of those. I'm going to go ahead and label the x values here of pi over 6, which is 1 third of the way to pi over 2, and then pi over 3, which is 2 thirds of the way to pi over 2. Pi over 4 sits exactly half of the way to pi over 2. So notice those aren't all evenly spaced exactly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just mark those on the graph of cosecant below here. So again, I'll mark pi over 6 and then pi over 3 to get those done evenly and then put pi over 4 in the middle. All right, let's start with the value of sine of pi over 6. Now, if you've forgotten some of these values, they're in the table at the bottom here. So we can see when x is pi over 6, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So if this is a value of 1 half, then 1 over 1 half is actually equal to 2. So we've got a cosecant value of 2. So pi over 6 comma 2. Okay, next one, pi over 4 has a sine value of square root of 2 over 2, and I'm going to do the reciprocal of that. So 1 over square root of 2 over 2 would be like 1 divided by square root of 2 over 2, or 1 times 2 over the square root of 2, or 2 over the square root of 2. I'm going to do the rationalization of that just to show you it works out nicely. So I'm going to multiply that by square root of 2 over square root of 2. So we'll have 2 square root of 2 over 2. 2 is reduced to make 1 and we just have the square root of 2. Um, you may not remember this but we originally got that square root of 2 over 2 because 1 over the square root of 2 is rationalized to be square root of 2 over 2. So when we take the reciprocal of 1 over square root of 2, we actually get square root of 2. Okay, anyways, that was just a long and fancy way of saying that uh, the reciprocal for pi over 4, the reciprocal of square root of 2 over 2, is just square root of 2. Phew! And square root of 2, if I pull out my calculator here, is about 1.414. So let's go ahead and graph that, 1.414, about there. Now for square root of 3, well we need to invert square root of 3 over 2. The easiest way to do that is to just turn it upside down, which would give us 2 over the square root of 3. And then rationalizing that, we can multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3 to get 2 square root of 3 over 3. It's kind of yucky, but we can come up with a decimal value, which is about 1.15. So let's go ahead and graph that 1.15, maybe about there, pi over 3 comma 1.15. Now we'll look at pi over 2, so the sine of pi over 2 is 1. This is a nice easy one. 1 over 1 is just 1. So we've got a value at pi over 2 comma 1. And then let's keep going. So inverting the square root of 3 over 2 again gives us um, the upside down of that. So that would be 2 over the square root of 3, which working through that gives us 2 square root of 3 over 3, or again about 1.15. Go ahead and plot that. I'm going to just take a second to draw in my uh, three special values here on the x-axis. 
So 1.15. And then uh, square root of 2 over 2. When I invert that, remember, I get square root of 2, which is about 1.414. We can plot that. Yeah, and then finally 1 half, 1 over 1 half should give us 2. So we can plot that. And then when we get to pi, we haven't done this one yet, uh, 1 over 0 would be undefined. And if it's undefined, that typically means we have a vertical asymptote there. So at pi, we're going to go ahead and draw in a vertical asymptote. Same thing actually happens at zero, which I skipped on purpose because I didn't want to start with this, but one divided by zero would also be undefined, and that would also give us a vertical asymptote. So if I go ahead and start sketching this in, I'm going to have a U-shaped curve with a minimum at pi over 2 comma 1 approaching both vertical asymptotes as the graph uh, goes up. It's a concave up curve, a perfect concave up curve, right? Um, very happy, happy face. Okay, let's go to the next uh, set of data points. And we should be a lot faster at this now because we've gotten fairly good at inverting things. Let me just start by marking off my axis here in thirds and halves thirds and halves, so I can put in points as I find them. All right, so again, we already had 1 over 0 was undefined, so let's just rewrite that one. 1 over negative 1 half is going to be negative 2. 1 over negative square root of 2 over 2 is going to be negative square root of 2, or negative 1.414. 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2 is going to be 2 square root of oh, negative, excuse me, negative 2 square root of 3 over 2 or negative 1.15. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. Again, we're kind of repeating values, so 1 over negative square root of 3 over 2 is negative 2 square root of 3 over 2 or negative 1.15. 1 over negative square root of 2 over 2 is negative square root of 2, or negative 1.414. And let's see, 1 over negative 1 half is negative 2. 1 over 0 is undefined again. So let's go ahead and graph those. Uh, we have 7 pi over 6, negative 2. And then 5 pi over 4, negative 1.414. And then 4 pi over 3, negative 1.15. 3 pi over 2, negative 1. 5 pi over 3, negative 1.15. Hopefully you can start to see a little pattern here. 7 pi over 4, negative 1.414. 11 pi over 6, negative 2. And then at 2 pi, we once again have a vertical asymptote. You can see we have a perfect concave down curve between the second and third vertical asymptotes. So we have one happy curve, one sad curve. Uh, and this is actually the repeating unit of cosecant. I'm going to jump over to Desmos so you can see it in all its glory. Here, I'm going to go ahead and add to this a graph of y equals, and go into functions here, and grab the cosecant function with an x. And you'll see as we look at it, as we zoom out, that this is a repeating function. It has a u-shape that opens up, and then a u-shape that opens down, and then a u-shape that opens up, and then a u-shape that opens down. It just repeats. And so the period of this function is actually both pieces, both an up piece and a down piece and then it repeats. And so the period going across here is 2 pi. The midline is actually the same midline as a sine function. We would draw our midline in, even though it never touches the midline, our midline is still at y equals 0.
and then the vertical asymptotes, if we just let's just write out a couple to start with. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, at x equals pi, at x equals 2 pi. They'll keep repeating x equals 3 pi, x equals 4 pi, etc. Going negative as well. So if we put a 1 in front of that pi, 1 pi, it's a little easier to see that basically our vertical asymptotes are at x equals n pi, where this time n is an integer. It's not an odd integer this time, it's actually any integer this time. So it's very important when you define, when you write n, that you define whether it's an integer or an odd integer, because that's going to matter in our problems.